This tiny little box next to me packs triple 2.5 gigabit network ports, dual 10 gigabit SFP plus ports, 32 gigabytes of GDR4 memory, 128 gigs of onboard storage, and NVMe expandability. But its most impressive feature might just be the price. Welcome back to Craft Computing, everyone. As always, I'm Jeff. Like I mentioned in the intro, this tiny little PC is a very impressive powerhouse. This is the R86S Soft Router U4, an x86 system on chip mini PC with a feature list that is pretty much a mile long. Let's get the basic specs out of the way first. The R86S is powered by an Intel Pentium Silver N6005 a 12th generation Jasper Lake CPU with four cores, four threads, a two gigahertz base clock, and a turbo of 3.3 gigahertz. Officially, the N6005 can support a maximum of 16 gigabytes of DDR4 memory. Yet, somehow, we've got 32 gigabytes of DDR4 running at 2933 MTS. We've also got 128 gigabytes of eMMC on board for storage, but expansion is also possible through microSD or the PC's M.2 NVMe slot. Now, an Intel SBC isn't really enough to get me excited, no matter how much RAM you're able to stuff inside. But the use case for the R86 SU4 is pretty obvious to anyone who reads the rest of the spec sheet. For networking, we're looking at built-in Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth with external antenna ports, three Intel i226 2.5 gigabit RJ45 ports, and possibly even more exciting are the dual 10 gigabit SFP Plus ports powered by a custom Mellanox Connect X3 chipset, meaning 10 gigabit routing and repeating over 10 kilometer single mode fiber is feasible using just this tiny little box. That means for $460, you could deploy this one single PC and be able to receive and route a 10 gigabit fiber connection, distribute network via 10 gigabit SFP plus to up to 10 kilometers away or up to 300 meters away via the three RJ45 2.5 gig jacks, host local network services, local file shares or virtual machines and power the whole damn thing from a 12 volt three amp DC power adapter. Oh, did I also mention there's a model that replaces the barrel jack with USB-C? But all of that hardware is for naught if there's no software that's able to take advantage of it. Luckily, support for Intel SBCs and Mellanox network cards is pretty much ubiquitous as of late, meaning there is out-of-the-box support for OpenWRT, PFSense, any flavor of Linux you can imagine, hypervisors like Proxmox or Windows, really anything you want to run on here is going to be supported. So that's that then. If you have a fire lookout, a weather station, earthquake monitoring station, or any other remote data cache that needs high bandwidth networking, this is basically the perfect box, right? Well, as impressed as I am, the R86S isn't without some minor criticisms and critiques. The biggest of which is actually to do with its networking capabilities, just not of the wired variety. See, while we do have built-in Wi-Fi, it's using the Intel N6005's built-in AX201 radio. It's a perfectly fine solution for client devices, but if you were wanting to run the R86S as a router and as a wireless access point, you're gonna be disappointed here. The Intel AX201, and pretty much every other Intel wireless card for that matter, only supports client connections. That means acting as an access point and an all-in-one wireless router is off the table without the use of additional hardware. Even worse, the AX201 is integrated onto the motherboard directly here via the SDIO interface, so there's not even an option to replace it with an AP radio. And while there is a Gen 3 M.2 slot inside the PC, it's a 2280 size slot designed for NVMe, not for Wi-Fi. And if you've ever dabbled with OpenWRT and ran into this specific issue before, you also know there aren't any reliable USB Wi-Fi adapters that support AP mode either. The root of this issue isn't even the fault of the R86S. It's actually a limitation with the Intel N6005 as a platform. While the N6005 does have eight PCI Express 3.0 lanes, those are being used by the NVMe port and the 10 gigabit LAN interface. In theory, the R86S could swap out the Connect X3 card for a beefier wireless radio, but that would require a custom PCB and interface just like the Connect X3 received before being placed into this PC. And unfortunately, there's likely a much larger market for distributed 10 gigabit fiber routers than there are for short range 2.5 gigabit units with reliable wireless APs on board. As far as performance goes, I've been very impressed with the R86S so far. 
Again, looking to frame this review around the use case of a device like this, meant for distributing fiber and running local services like DHCP, DNS, routing, or even a light file share, that all takes very few resources. And the N6005 had no trouble keeping up when running those services. In fact, network speeds were able to hold line rate speeds with ease. Simple services like DHCP and DNS ran with no issue at all through a basic PFSense install. The only sign of slowdown came when running TrueNAS scale and attempting to hit 10 gig file transfer speeds, where I did see bursts up to 10 gigabit, but most transfers settled in closer to around 6.5 gigabit. Still, not too shabby for such a small and low power device. Having support for only a single NVMe drive is also on my list of man I really wish features. Splitting out the X4 NVMe lanes into a pair of 2X lanes would cut the top speed potential in half but it would also allow for RAID 1 configurations on the NVMe drives. And in remote locations, I'll take reliability over speed any day, especially the days that I might have to send a technician 10 kilometers into the woods to replace a failed drive. Splitting those lanes would also add significant expense to the R86S, as it would now need a PLX chip to bifurcate the X4, and I highly doubt the Pentium Silver N6005 has hardware support to handle that on its own. And PLX chips remain absurdly expensive today thanks to Broadcom having a de facto monopoly after they purchased a Quantia in 2014. But that's a story and a rant for another day. In any case, I've been rambling about wishlist items for the last two to three minutes because I honestly can't find anything else negative to say about the R86S, especially considering both its price point and its intended use case. Being able to place a local network service provider 10 kilometers downstream, complete with 10 gigabit and 2.5 gigabit routing ability, enough horsepower to run a small business, all for just $460, is a crazy good value in my book. Sure, I wish access point wireless or dual NVMe was a possibility without sacrificing the 10 gig networking, but with only eight lanes to work with, it's hard to knock that in the end product. So, if you're interested in picking up the R86S soft router U4 for yourself, or one of its many variants, I will have both AliExpress and Amazon affiliate links down in the video description. On your way down there, make sure to drop this video a like and subscribe to Craft Computing if you haven't done so already. Follow me on the social medias at Craft Computing, and also don't forget to head over to craftcomputing.store, pick yourself up a pint glass, and start drinking like a pro. That's gonna do it for me in this one. Thank you all so much for watching. And as always, I will see you in the next video. Cheers, guys. Beer for today is from a brewery in Bend, Oregon that I've actually not had before. And as a native Oregonian, that feels like a weird sentence to say. This is from Silver Moon Brewing. It is their Lunar Series, one of six unique drops, Dark Side Stout, clocking in at 6.9%. Nice. Even better than a stout is this freaking can art. Uh, you've got an astronaut pulling back the curtain on a Matrix scene with Hacker Man. <laughs> sitting in front of the the matrix code scroll i like it all right i think i'm finally ready to review this one again this is the silver moon brewing bend oregon dark side stout it doesn't smell like a whole lot again this is kind of a lighter stout at 6.9 percent so don't expect these rich chocolate and coffee and super dark flavors despite what the name may imply yeah, on the head, it's a real light malt. Um, almost more reminiscent of like an Irish red or something like that. It's very pleasant. Boy, super, super smooth and creamy. Uh, part of that has to do with the head that is developed on this beer, in part from the nucleated glass, which you can get over at craftcomputing.store. But very smooth, robust, filling, full. Not usually descriptors I get to use with a 7% stout. This one, like I said, is not super chocolatey or coffee or roasty or oaky or anything like that. It's almost got a light nuttiness to it. Um, think like a, a pecan or an almond or, um, you know, just a real light salted peanut. Uh, I like this one. It, it's not overly complex, but it is 
fairly rich for what it is. Good job. <laughs>